Welcome to the first episode of Highlights from the Hill. I'm here with Jim Cousins and in this wonderful HCAM studio um, with this great set that he has built or they have built um, for our use. We have been looking forward to providing um, an episode, a monthly episode for the community to keep you aware of all of the wonderful things that are going on in our schools. And this is the first one with the focus we thought should be on helping you to get a glimpse of all of the things that take place throughout the summer months in order for us to be ready to open our doors as we did this morning to all of our students. You know, I've been so excited to do this show, so thank you for coming on and hosting this show with me. It's my pleasure. It's really going to be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so much stuff that goes on in the school um, that people just don't know about, you know? And like, we know a lot because we're there all the time, mm -hmm. taping things like that. Mm -hmm. And especially with this episode being the first one, I love that we're talking about things that have been going on over the summer right. in preparation so people can kind of get a feel for it. You know, I think the idea came to us when we were talking about, you know, the first episode and running into people in the community asking how my summer is going and, yes. you know, are you having a quiet summer or have you been away for a few weeks? And realizing that, wow, there's so many things that people don't have any idea takes place. Um, we often comment on the fact that if we had year-round schooling, <laughs> we, we wouldn't be closing and we wouldn't be opening. Yep. Um, but there is a lot that goes into the opening. And right. I think having you in to those various places um, has will really provide kind of, as I said, a glimpse mm. into all of those things that are going on in our schools before we open our doors officially. Exactly. So let's jump into our first segment. This one was produced by our news director, Tom Nappy, mm -hmm. who met up with Al and um, went over some of the major projects that they worked on over this summer. So Al Rogers is our director of buildings and grounds, and I think it was a perfect beginning mm -hmm. because not only do we have capital improvement projects going on um, throughout the summer but then of course there's the just the prep there are classrooms that change locations that people might not think about that that is a lot of work for our custodians mm -hmm. uh, maintaining the grounds um, work jobs that are needing to take place painting that happens during the uh, during the summer months but then yep. also some major projects like major. the changes to the um, high school library, the media yeah. center, which is the roofs, going to be our new home for school committee. Yes, yes. yes. So yes, the the Hopkins and high school roof project that just finished up yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, and the timing of all of those. A lot of work goes into preparing and timing, going out to bid for the um, different contractors who are going to do the work. Right. Um, takes a lot of people to have pull that all off and be ready for the students to come back. Exactly. All right, so let's roll that first segment and see what they got. So we are um, redoing the roof at uh, the shingled roof, which is the, the high pitch roof at the Hopkins School um, around the perimeter. And we're doing some of the low slope roof. And we're addressing the, um, the low slope roof at Hopkins School and the high school. We're stripping in seams. So they're, you know, 15, 20 year old roofs and we're um, trying to do some uh, preventative maintenance and addressing a few leaks that we have. Um, the, uh, you know, the shingle roof at Hopkins has, uh, you know, met his, its life uh, cycle. So it, it's best that we replace that now. We're replacing the scoreboard uh, at the high school um, with um, two LED uh, modern uh, scoreboards that'll be on the walls. Uh, we're motorizing the bleachers at both the middle school and the high school so um, you know we can save the custodians back and um, alleviate you know the potential for liability if if the bleachers aren't weren't pulled out perfectly that you know there's a gap in between the bleachers so these are on track so they they open and close um, you know through a, a motor device so um, also, we're doing some painting at Elmwood, um, where we uh, replace two condensing units uh, for the air conditioning for the uh, computer lab and the library. Um, those are both, uh, they were put in in, I think, 89, is, uh, is what, so they've reached their life cycle. Um, we are replacing a... Um, uh, compressor unit for the 
condensing unit for um, for one of the A handlers at Hopkins. It's a rooftop unit. Um, we are also uh, moving, replacing, and painting lockers at the middle school, um, and we're adding some new ones down down uh, the other end near the near the tennis courts. So we're replacing some carpet uh, with VCT at the middle school, and we're replacing some carpet in uh, in some classrooms at Elmwood. Um, and then you know there's our regular routine things like um, you know the custodians go through the buildings and they. They clean from top to bottom. They uh, strip and wax um, every classroom, every corridor. Um, we're screening and refinishing all of the wooden gym floors. Then uh, you know we have the normal testing that we have to do, uh, that we're re required to do every every summer. Fire alarm testing, uh, our sprinkler systems to make sure those work. We're testing and doing some preventative maintenance on generators overhauling boilers uh, and um, you know testing them to make sure that they're all working to their peak efficiency um, that includes domestic water heaters um, we're replacing a domestic water heater at the middle school we're adding um, air conditioning to the auditorium um, and uh, also in the auditorium we're doing some uh, some upgrades were painting the floor and refinishing the floor in front of the presidium, uh, adding some lighting, replacing some rigging, um, and a new control system for the lighting uh, at the middle school in the auditorium. And you know, again, our regular routine maintenance, we, uh, we have to address every air handler, every unit ventilator, every classroom and the majority of the district has a, uh, a unit ventilator that supplies fresh air and heat and in some cases cooling at the high school. Um, every single one of those units has to be, uh, the filters have to be changed, the motors are oiled, we clean them, make sure that the dampers are opening and closing properly. Um, we address pneumatic control systems, uh, make sure that the, the compressors are um, working properly. Uh, and then, you know, we, uh, the exhaust fans, we change belts on exhaust fans and, um, you know, lubricate motors. And um, we uh, walk all the roofs to uh, make sure that there are no issues, you know, with the roofs, debris collecting, um, you know, potential hazards um, that could cause a leak down the road. It goes on all summer long. Some of it will be, um, you know, into the, uh, into the school year. We'll, we'll um, address all the stuff that has to get done in classrooms and teaching spaces. Um, some of the stuff can uh, can uh, you know go into the school year that you know doesn't affect the, the education process. Okay, so that was really interesting, and what I find really amazing, um, Al Rogers has so much work. When you asked him by email to like give us a list of some of the projects. I could not believe how long that list was. Mm -hmm. It was huge. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of work done, a lot of work. And you know, I'll just comment really quickly. It's because so much of that does have to happen in the summer. We yeah. just, so many of the projects that need to take place can't happen mm -hmm. when there are kids in the building. So. Exactly. So the next segment yes. um, is really going to be focusing on the subject matter leaders retreat that took place over the summer uh, with the high school administration leadership. Um, and that role is really content specific, so there's a subject matter leader expert for each department within the high school. And some of them extend to responsibilities that include the middle school as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they all get together in the summer and they spend a couple of days planning for the upcoming year. And that's what you will see in this next segment. Over the summer, um, the high school leadership team, uh, which is made up of the administration as well as the SMLs for all the departments, get together uh, for two days at the Warren Conference Center in Ashland. Uh, we take the time to, we call it a retreat, we take the time to um, get on the same page uh, for the upcoming school year, talk about goals, talk about the vision for the year, but we also recap the year uh, that just passed and, and some of the things that went well and maybe some of the things that we can improve upon. Um, we, we try to break the days down into sections. Uh, so the first day this past summer was focused on kind of expectations for both students and staff as well as the evaluation system. 
Uh, in the second day, uh, we focused more on professional development, um, adjustment to practice in the classroom, uh, as well as technology. So uh, what we do is uh, we often have kind of roundtable discussions when it comes to some of these topics. Um, you know, we've planned out our professional development uh, for all of our building-based meeting times uh, from the beginning of the school year all the way up through uh, the winter break. Uh, we'll continue to plan the rest of the year as the school year goes on. Uh, we've talked a lot about homework. I know that there was a recent homework survey that went out to the community. So we spent a good, uh, good chunk of time at our retreat talking about what those results show us and how that's going to impact our work here at the high school. Um, uh, Mr. Ghosh, the Director of Technology, also came and, and spent some time with us going through uh, the new uh, student information system that we'll be migrating to probably this upcoming December or January, uh, which will be a shift for many of our teachers and parents. We formerly have had iPass and we're moving to a, uh, a new system which we're excited about, PowerSchool. Um, the, a big focus of the district continues to be on the social and emotional health and well-being of our students. Um, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, we've had de-stress weeks here at the high school. Uh, we've had some homework-free weekends and vacations. We are going to move uh, to a model of having uh, homework-free vacations for every vacation, uh, as well as every three-day weekend, which we think will, um, will, will at least uh, be an effort to show that the students and parents and staff that uh, we're committed to uh, trying to have students you know, kind of find a healthy balance uh, when it comes to, to managing their stress. We also talked a little bit about um, uh, goal setting and how important that is for our staff at the beginning of the year when we talk about the evaluation system and um, you know there's a large rubric that every teacher and administrator gets evaluated on uh, but we want to also put a priority on setting proper goals and trying to reach them throughout the course of the year. Um, and those were really, the, we also had a little bit of fun, uh, not to, uh, you know, I'm, uh, we, we get together as a staff, it's a very, very high functioning group, a very, very dedicated um, uh, SMLs or department heads if you want to call them in, at the high school and we're very fortunate to have them on staff and uh, it, it is probably uh, two of the best professional development days uh, that, that personally I know that, that, that we have here at the, at, at the high school. Uh, we get a lot out of it, uh, it really sets us up in a good place to start the year. Um, and we have two PD days to start the year with the staff and, and, and really we're excited to, to, to jump into it and get going for another exciting and, and, and um, successful year. All right, so that actually was really fun segment because I got to do the B-roll going there and yeah. watching all those teachers. So passionately engaged with your subject matter and like really digging in was, was really cool for me to watch. As well as this next segment where I also was able to catch some of the B-roll. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So every summer the administrative team spends some time together, an administrative team made up of administrators from all of the buildings as well as central office. And we spend some time together um, away from the district for a couple of days so that we can really disconnect from the day-to-dayness of preparing for the opening of school and do some professional development of our own. So in this next segment you're going to be hearing a little bit from John Doria um, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about how we're working with him. Hi, I'm John Doria. I'm the president of Teachers 21, which is a nonprofit organization that supports educators across the state and through New England through professional development. I'm going to suggest that meetings are a really important space for leaders because they create experiences for people. On day one of the administrative retreat, we spent the day with John Doria from Teachers 21 with a focus on psychological safety in, in a community where there's high expectations. What we really spent the day talking about is how important it is to engage with children, with students on an emotional level. That until they are feeling emotionally um, understood and feeling like they, all of those needs are met, they're really not as available for learning. As educators talking about uh, the student safety and reducing stress, it's something that we really enjoyed spending the day talking about, which is how can we reduce stress, but more importantly, how can we make people, st students feel that their emotional needs are being met so that they can be available for the hard work of learning, which is after all what we're all about. On the second day of the retreat, the team spent more time on team building activities. And the connection that we were making to modeling for students that we are also taking care of our emotional needs and making sure that we're supported in a way that we as administrators also need. So we spent some time looking at, you know, d data, which is something that we want to do in the summer, time away from the buildings and the everyday 
work of getting ready to start school and really spending time as a team looking at areas where we really wanted to be able to improve, areas where we feel like we're doing well, and then what are the assessment, what are the sources that really give us the information we need to make instructional decisions. And the highlight of the second day was having some time for team building and really just getting to know each other, getting to know the new members of our team, sharing some laughs together, sharing a meal together, and leaving the day feeling that we are all there to support each other in, in our work. We've worked with John Doria before and as a team we really enjoy his approach. What's different this year is that he's going to be coming back and working on the first day of school with our teachers, um, in the morning with the secondary, in the afternoon with the elementary teachers, sharing the same message that we talked about as administrators around psychological safety, high expectations, and difficult conversations. Uh, and then in addition, he'll be working with our team throughout the year. The idea being that we can be very excited about a new initiative in the summer and then things get started and we get really distracted with just the day-to-day -day business of running schools. So John will be working with our team at four other occasions throughout the year, providing us with professional development that we need to continue in our work. So it was in that segment we talked about our work with John Doria and he actually did come yesterday mm. um, and he met with the secondary teachers in the morning, all of them at the cafeteria uh -huh. at the high school, um, middle, middle and high school teachers and then the elementary folk came in the afternoon. The feedback that I've received today and last night has been tremendous. Oh, good. Um, one of the principals said to me that it was one of the best professional development days that the teachers felt that they had had mm -hmm. in a long time and that it really set them up for the beginning of the year in terms of their approach to instruction. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful yeah. to have an individual come in and have that kind of an impact. Yeah. The and, you know, when I was l watching, when I was there taping some of this B-roll, you know, a lot of these skills everybody should use you know everybody should learn these things that he's teaching because it's just a wise way of interacting and understanding you know where people are at doesn't it make sense mm -hmm. i think sometimes you get so caught up in the data and the test scores and the instructional strategies that you forget about the human part right and that's what he reminded us of especially in today's world where everybody's plugged in and yes. connected and they're not like out talking to people I mean don't right. get me on that That's right <laughs> that'll be the next maybe the next episode right yeah. so our final segment is is probably the most entertaining one and and I'm really proud of um, because I don't think that you'll see this in every district the number of activities that take place in all of our schools and you just have a sampling of it here right. um, we couldn't get the events every, that you got to so much you know popsicles on the playground for example you'll see that at the center school but it al also took place at the Elmwood school and at the Hopkins school yeah um, the activities inviting kids in to do scavenger hunts and just feel familiar with the building that is so huge for first day jitters mm -hmm. and the uh, meeting with the bus drivers I love that segment yeah. because who would even think that the bus drivers got together like that with I Marianne know. I remember with my kids right we had Charlie the bus driver every year he would come and he would drive his route and everybody right? knew him. it was great and you just think he shows up Charlie <laughs> and somehow he knows his route and yeah. so um, those are all really important things that took place the ignite activities mm -hmm. with kids and people bringing their time in and giving of their time um, before we've even officially begun is just mm -hmm. tremendous. Yeah. All right, let's check out that segment. Let's see it. As coordinated we can, but with those little ones, we really want to get them out and onto the buses. So it can be that Center School is able to leave Center School a little bit before Elmwood School. Um, we're having our bus driver meeting today. We meet every year annually uh, to review all the routes that the bus drivers drive. Um, all the uh, rules on the bus, how to manage the buses, and um, we have a general discussion about making everything go well uh, for the Hopkinton School students on the bus, and we invite parents, if they have any uh, questions, to call me at, the, um, at Hopkinton Public School Administration, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. So this is our kindergarten popsicles on the playground. 
students have an opportunity to meet classmates. We color code the name tag, so anytime they see a similar name tag, be it a school bus or pencils, they can introduce themselves, meet some new friends, and parents also have the opportunity to meet other parents. Kindergartners are, are new to the school system, most of them, and we also had many families new to Hopkinton, so it's a great opportunity to build connections. Are you looking forward to kindergarten? Yeah! You don't know where the guidance counselor is? No. Where is Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. So at Elmwood School, we have an opening day event that is student led. It's called a scavenger hunt. Um, students come with their families. They don't necessarily go into the classrooms, but they locate the doors. They find um, their spots. They, they, students who would like to are able to come in the front door, kind of manage, okay, this is how I get to my room. This is where I'll go on the first day. They locate things throughout the building, such as a mural in the gymnasium. There's a giant bug on the wall in the library. Um, and it just gives kids an opportunity to reconnect with one another, to get sort of wrap around the idea that school will soon begin and to make some connections with some faces at Elmwood School. So it's a nice sort of first step to the school year. And it's a steep tradition at Elmwood School to conduct it this way, so. Today, the sixth graders uh, arrive at, with their parents at nine o'clock this morning. They're greeted as they enter the school. Uh, very, very uh, loud greeting and a very welcome greeting. And then the students have the opportunity to do some games in the, in the gymnasium. Are you ready? Go! important thing is I think we do a really nice job uh, giving that orientation, making sixth graders feel welcome to the school and helping them understand where everything is in the school. Um, but one of the things that we worked really hard on is making sure that the relationship doesn't end today. Uh, let's just, there are still a few carriers across the hall, so if we can just have everybody scream when I say Korea, that'd be awesome. One, two, three. Korea! 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 We have eighth graders that volunteer um, their time um, to mentor sixth graders. So the sixth graders that come into our school um, have eighth grade mentors that help them with the transition into the middle school. Um, it's great because the eighth graders get leadership experience um, that really helps them develop. And sixth graders, a lot of them you know, are nervous coming into a new situation, a bigger building, a new school, um, and they get instant eighth grade friends that have been here for a while and we continue the program throughout the year. It's been really successful for eighth graders developing leadership skills and sixth graders making the transition. To return to us. So please carefully go through that packet. We will need parent chaperones. What we do is when the parents drop off their, their child uh, at nine o'clock, their sixth grader, um, the parents then come into the auditorium and Mrs. Grady, Mrs. Ben Benick and I um, talk to the parents about what to expect that first day of school. So where your child will be dropped off what will happen, how their homeroom teacher will um, bring them to their homeroom, uh, what to expect in terms of the schedule, in terms of grades. Uh, we talk to them about having kind of an emergency backup plan in case um, the child's cell phone isn't working, how they can communicate with them because in this age of technology we're so used upon, uh, used to relying upon technology that we talk about, okay, make sure you have a list somewhere in that child's backpack of, um, of emergency contacts. And then, um, and then we also have Nature's Classroom. So Nature's Classroom is a, is a four-day uh, experience uh, where our students go to Charlton Mass and they stay there for four days. Uh, and it's an overnight experience that connects with our science curriculum. Nature's Classroom is an outdoor environmental ed program. We've been around since 1973, so I believe we're starting our 44th school year. And at last count, we've had over 1 million students come through our Nature's Classroom program. And so we have a, an individual from Nature's Classroom talk to um, talk to parents about what to expect, uh, what the point of Nature's Classroom is, and and uh, and how they can prepare their child for that overnight experience. So much stuff, right? 
such great energy, so much ex excitement and enthusiasm. And you know, Jim, it really does transfer to that first day jitters. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very happy to announce today is the first day. We're halfway through the first day. <laughs> And we, all the buses arrived on time. Our final route to the center school yeah. was right on time. And our transportation director said, even with all those first day of school photographs that take place as wow. kiddos are getting on the bus, that they were still able to be on oh, time. That's awesome. Um, so that was great. I was able to be over at the middle school and just witness all the excitement. A couple of students trying to find their classrooms and then just teachers throughout the hallways being there to guide them. Um, and I think that this idea of having the first couple of days mm -hmm. for kids to get used to all kids, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's high school right down to our youngest learners, yeah. there's a lot of routines that they have to reestablish. There's a lot for them to take in on those first couple of days, mm -hmm. um, reestablishing re friendships, etc., finding out what they want, it, what they know about their teacher. So I really like the way this opening is taking place with a couple of days of professional development for teachers a couple of days for kids to get used to routines, then a nice long weekend for everybody yep. so that we can really hit the ground running um, next Tuesday. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, and that is pretty much a wrap for this show. Wow. Uh, I'm really excited about all the different things that we're gonna be talking about and all the future segments that we're gonna be doing. And we want to hear from you. This is a interactive, meant to be an interactive um, show. So please email me if you have ideas, things that you'd like to hear us talking about, maybe someone you would like to he see interviewed. Um, I'd be really happy to, um, to listen to your ideas and, and take your input. Yeah. And, and send those questions along because we could do a segment where you actually answer questions from the mailbag. Oh, yes, that too. Yeah. Mailbag. We'll have to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. Hey, thanks so much. It's My been, pleasure. It's been great. Great. All right. See you next time, everybody. Thank you.